Welcome back to the RAS ACS and Behind the Knife Journal Club on Landmark Papers and Surgery. My name is Caleb Seavey, and I'm a Basic Science Research Fellow and a General Surgery Resident at the Cleveland Clinic. I will be discussing one of the most landmark papers in hepatobiliary surgery entitled A Step-Up Approach or Open Necrosectomy for Necrotizing Pancreatitis, also known as the Panther Trial. This paper was published in the New England Journal of Medicine by the Dutch Pancreatitis Study Group in 2010. Prior to this study, the standard approach for the management of infected pancreatic necrosis necessitated an open necrosectomy, whereby patients would undergo a laparotomy and surgical debridement of all liquefied pancreatic and peripancreatic tissue. This approach would often require multiple reoperations and conferred a high morbidity and mortality. Leading up to this study, there was a limited body of literature which suggested that percutaneous drain placement and minimally invasive necrosectomy may obviate the need for open necrosectomy. However, no level 1 evidence existed at the time to guide clinical management. In order to compare the outcomes of open surgical management versus a step-up approach, the Dutch group performed a multi-center randomized control trial of 88 patients with suspected or confirmed infected pancreatic necrosis. In terms of some of the study specifics, suspected infection was defined by the presence of persistent sepsis and or signs of clinical deterioration despite optimal ICU care. Confirmed necrosis was defined by the presence of gas in a fluid collection or a positive pancreatic necrosis FNA culture. Patients were excluded from the study if they had acute on chronic pancreatitis, if they had a prior exploratory laparotomy during the current episode of pancreatitis, if they had a prior drainage procedure or surgery for infected necrosis, if the pancreatitis was due to a previous abdominal surgery, or if they had another indication for surgery. These generally included bleeding, abdominal compartment syndrome, or perforated viscous. The step-up approach was a tiered algorithm whereby patients would undergo a percutaneous drain placement with a preference of accessing the cavity through the left retroperitoneum. If there was insufficient drainage following the initial drain placement, patients would undergo further percutaneous interventions. Finally, if multiple attempts at percutaneous management was not successful, patients would undergo a video-assisted retroperitoneal debridement, also known as a VARD procedure. As the initial drain was placed through the retroperitoneum, the drain track can be followed down to the necrotic cavity, and a laparoscope and instruments can be inserted to remove the dead tissue and drain the area widely. Patients were randomized in a one-to-one -one fashion with 45 patients in the open necrosectomy arm and 43 in the step-up approach arm. Patients in both groups had similar baseline characteristics. 44 out of the 45 patients in the open necrosectomy group underwent open operative debridement. In this group, 42% of patients required multiple laparotomies. In the step-up approach arm, 40 out of 43 patients underwent retroperitoneal drain placement, one underwent transabdominal drain placement, and two underwent endoscopic drain placement. These alternatives were performed because of a lack of a retroperitoneal window for drainage. Out of the step-up cohort, 35% of patients only required a drainage procedure. 5% died prior to operative intervention due to progressive multisystem organ failure, and the remaining 60% required operative debridement. Of these operative procedures, 24 out of 26 were VARDs, while the remaining two were open debridements due to the lack of a retroperitoneal access route. In terms of clinical outcomes, patients who were randomized to the step-up approach had a statistically significant lower composite of major complications and death when compared to the open group. This difference was driven by a significant decrease in multisystem organ failure associated with the step-up group, while overall mortality was similar between these groups. They further demonstrated that the step-up approach was associated with significantly decreased rates of incisional hernia, new onset diabetes, and the need for pancreatic enzyme supplementation. Finally, the step-up approach was associated with decreased rates of ICU admission following intervention with no difference in overall hospital or ICU lengths of stay. The step-up approach was also associated with an overall decrease in admission costs. All in all, the PANTER trial demonstrated superior outcomes associated with the step-up approach, with a significant number of patients in the step-up approach arm 
only requiring drain placement without further interventions. In regards to some of the unanswered questions that remained after this study, in the era of much better advanced endoscopy and endoscopic ultrasound guided procedures, the one that has become highly relevant is where does endoscopic drainage exist in the treatment algorithm. There are certainly significant advantages to endoscopic drainage, both by obviating the need for external drains as well as allowing for a minimally invasive approach to pancreatic debridement. However, many of these advancements have been developed and mastered more recently than this trial. As such, use of a percutaneous first only approach as used in this trial with endoscopic drainage as a third line procedure may not be applicable in current clinical practice. As well, some have commented that this study may be underpowered to demonstrate a difference in mortality. However, it should be noted that even with the study as it was published, the mortality difference between the groups very slightly favored the open approach. However, this was very non-significant with a p-value of 0.7. As such, generating a clinical trial with enough patients to demonstrate a difference in mortality would likely not be feasible. While this study focused on the step-up approach as a whole demonstrating improved outcomes, individual components of this approach cannot be clearly assessed with their study design. The question that was mainly left unanswered was among patients who failed percutaneous drainage, should they undergo a minimally invasive debridement, in this case a VARD, or should they proceed directly to an open necrosectomy? While there are obvious potential advantages of a minimally invasive approach, some had concerns associated with the completeness of a necrosectomy performed through a VARD when compared to an open approach. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, you can reach me at my email listed below. Don't forget to review this content with the current This Week in Score modules on pancreatitis.